Hi guys. Okay. This video is going to be a bit different than what you're usually used to. I thought that I would share with you what it's like when someone gets a migraine. If you follow me on my Instagram, I said on yesterday, which was the 9th, I think? Is it the 9th? The 9th that I had a migraine come in. I felt quite nauseous as well. I'm going to share with you where this migraine's come from, which I believe, what it feels like. And I'm giving you a taste of what a migraine is, because a lot of people think they know what a migraine is. And truthfully, they have no idea. They have no idea this isn't just a headache. So, I figured that when you tell people you have migraines, they think, you've got a headache, you'll be fine. Couldn't be further from the truth. So you may notice that my words might be slurring. The reason why is because when you have a migraine, for me, one of my symptoms is that my tongue feels like a slug in my mouth and it's hard to form words, it's hard to think straight. I thought I would document a little bit about what it's like, especially during the coronavirus. We were watching something yesterday and they were talking about the environment. The end of last year, the beginning of this year, I found out that the environment, if there's um, chemicals in the air, that can trigger a migraine. If there's um, bad air, that can trigger a migraine for those of us that have migraines. Migraines are neurological, which means that parts of our brain get overexcited and it can lead to pain. So, mine came yesterday i i have this symptom that my other half jack knows and that is that i play with my hair a lot in particular these bits here my sideburns these bit there i've now got my hair up in a banana clip you can't really see it but it because my hair is so thick i wanted to put it up because it's so heavy on my head and every time that I move or something, I couldn't really even wash my hair all that well today. So I just shoved it up in a banana clip. So just to take the weight off. But I play with my hair an awful lot when I'm going to go into my grain. In particular these bits. And I'm always kind of bringing it from one side to another side. So for me, um, my mig my migraine came, believe it or not, not yesterday, day before, because I was seeing a lot of aura. I see aura all the time anyway, but I was seeing quite a lot of it. And if you don't know what aura is, it can mean that you see glimmers, you can see black spots. I was seeing black spots. And um, I, wherever I was looking, I could see what... Basically, imagine you're looking at something, imagine a hole, a black hole there. And um, I noticed that I kept craving chocolate. And I kept craving salt. To me, I've been dealing with hormonal stuff anyway. And hormonal stuff can be a trigger. And for the last week or so, I've been feeling what essentially feels kind of like morning sickness. I've been feeling nauseous all day. Every day for the past few days. And um, I've been craving salt. Usually I eat ready salted crisps from a company called Walkers. But because of the coronavirus, they're very hard to get. And when we get online shopping, they're giving us substitutes. And that part of the substitution, I think, is what's triggered the migraine. There is an ingredient in the crisp called sunflower oil. And um, when I looked it up, that apparently, yeah, that, that does great things for migraines. So I've, I'm going to lay off with them today and see if um, that helps. Um, drinking plenty of water because every migraine sufferer knows that the more you drink the more is you're yeah, likely to keep your body hydrated um so we were watching something yesterday that said about that the environment is healing since the coronavirus because planes are being grounded trains have stopped and things that the um the air is clearer i was having a discussion a couple of weeks ago about this very subject with someone in real life not online and um, we were talking about that very subject and I said being a migraine sufferer if there's something in the air I get a migraine and I've noticed that the duration of migraines for me this one in particular is quite shorter so 
I my, I have a ton of different migraines. Believe it or not, you don't just get one when you're migraine sufferer. You might get silent migraine. You might get one. I've had ones where my body literally shuts down. It happened to me yesterday, and it's scary if you if you're not used to being around that. And my left side basically shuts down. I can't talk. Yesterday I got it just in time. I took an ibuprofen, but I couldn't talk, so I had to talk to my mum via text messaging. And I talked to Jack via the same way. And believe it or not, I actually, I don't know any sign language. I only know little bits of it. But my form of communication, I have, I, I can communicate with Jack in a kind of sign language that we both know. But if I have to talk to someone else, I have to rely upon texting. So there have been a few things that I've kind of been let down by during the coronavirus that otherwise it would have been quite simple to get. One... I use migraine strips. I got these other migraine strips online and when they came, I I call it the firewall. It's otherwise other people might call it a preventative. And what it means is you have to get there before it takes because migraine is like it's like a fire. Once it once you get the symptom, once you smell the smoke, you have to put it out, otherwise it's gonna it's gonna take over your body. Um yesterday in particular I was saying to Jack that I felt really like I had a head. I don't get headaches. I get migraines. I don't get headaches at all. If I get headaches, I know that there's something going on. There's a build-up. People might say, of course you do. No, I don't get headaches. I get migraines. If I get a pressure point or I get something like that, a pressure point can sometimes turn into migraines because I also have fibromyalgia and a heap of other conditions too. But when we talk about migraines, I don't get headaches. Yes, I get hay fever, but I'm not been out to get hay fever. Well, I'm in all the time, basically, because of the coronavirus lockdown. And there's nowhere for me to go. So I'm, it's not hay fever because I'm not going out. It's something in my environment that's triggering it. So it's my job and I'm relying on my senses to figure out what it is. So... My mum brought down, my brother brought my mum um, some flowers for Mother's Day just gone and they're still, they're still kind of lingering. My mum decided to bring the flowers from her room down to the kitchen and I can smell pollen so I said to my mum, you brought those down, that could be a migraine trigger for me so that was something. Another thing is of course hormonal, you know, I'm, I find that what would the, like what would the stress and stuff is going to have an impact but for me, what I found quite fascinating is that my migraines aren't just a couple of hours, they last days. They literally, it's like you walk along this path and basically you're, you're, someone kind of knocks you off of it. And I was noticing uh, two nights ago or so I was talking to Jet and I felt helpless. I felt hopeless and helpless and I felt like no matter what I was doing it wasn't good enough. And um, in most areas of my life and I cried and I realised yesterday that that was what was one of the symptoms that feeling hopeless is a is an opening to you're going to get a migraine. I've had these since I was 12. I'm now in my 30s and even now I'm still finding symptoms that I didn't even think was there. So I noticed that um, I want to do things but I can't do it. But I have noticed that when I get a migraine, fatigue takes a back seat. It's weird because fatigue, it's like leading up someone up the garden path. Fatigue gets you there. For me, I have chronic fatigue syndrome. And if there's like, um, if I have a lot of fatigue, it could be like a difference in barometric changes, something like that. And it comes to a peak and then usually I get a stiff neck and I have to get, I usually get a migraine. For me, when I'm in a migraine, like right now, I'm actually in one. I'm not laying in bed because I'm okay. Believe it or not, contrary to popular belief, you can get up and do things. you just got a pounding headache. And um, for me, I have been bed bound by migraines before, but using that experience, I know what works and what doesn't. So I stay away from outside because of the light. So far I've been okay. This one has just caused me to feel like a headache. I've got on top of my head, this right here, you've got a nerve that goes from like your nose all the way to your head. It's called the trigeminal nerve. And that literally powers, it's a really, really thick nerve and it powers everything in your head. And you also have pressure points. And I have fibromyalgia. And I have a pressure point that I've talked about quite a lot in the back of my um, neck. 
So since I've had this migraine, I've, this area here, you've heard me talk about the fact that I wanted to get a tragus piercing. This area here, I keep wanting to grip hold and push my nail into it because it's an acupressure point. I've got this one over here, believe it or not. When I had that done, I did that myself. I did a ton of research. But I did that myself using a, um, a pierces needle. And I got this from online. I did that myself. Since doing that, I found that my migraines aren't as intense. They don't last as long. But this area here, I have something called allodynia, which means that this area feels really sensitive. It's sensitive to touch. If I do that, it feels like a bruise. And as I talked about, like on the earlier side of this video, where I have my little my little um, bits of hair that come down. If I muck about with them, it's my sign that I'm going to be in pain, that I'm going to have allodynia there. So right now, I'm feeling pain here. I have my hair up. I'm a bit nauseous. <laughs> I have my hair up in a banana clip. I can't take my hair, I can't take clips at the moment. So I'll share a picture. You probably see it on Instagram or the cover of this video. But I have um, a banana clip in my hair because it's keeping it all up and so there's enough pressure on my head that it's not too painful, it's it's kind of like a good support. Um, I'm going to today take it as easy as I can. It is frustrating because there are things I want to do, There are I want to upload things to my shop, I want to continue knitting my cushion cover but my body knows, you know what happens if you, if you, you know, overdo it you know, it's going to get worse. Usually in spring, where the flowers are blooming and the seasons are changing, it takes everyone time to adapt. But for me, it's it's a battle, even though you're used to battling, migraines, you can't see them. The only way you can see them is if you're looking at someone and they say a migraine, you can see here, one eye looks smaller than the other one. And when you see me close up, part of my face droops a little bit. That's really the only physical sign you can tell because the difference. When I have fatigue, this bit looks more like a bear where it looks like I've got bags. So when I've got fatigue, you can see that. When I've got migraine though, can you see it? You can see it now? One side drapes. It's literally the brain has got so much to deal with. So for me, my word slur. It's very scary. It's kind of for me. It's like being locked in. It's like being locked in your body. You can... My brain works fine. My brain behind my eyes and everything works fine. You know, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a taste about what I see. So I'm going to turn you around. I just found there's an ant on my mattress. So I have to concentrate on that, okay? So my brain... Someone can ask me a question. I'm thinking, okay, I can see... The word, ant, right? You see that little guy there? <laughs> so you can see him. You can't form the word though. So you have to think of a way of communicating. He's having a good old time there, isn't he? Oh, sorry. Just throwing you out. So you can form the word in your brain, but you can't say it. When people say they have migraines, everyone has different ones. A silent migraine basically means you kind of... Um, you, you, for me, my body shuts down but there's no pain, which is it's good but it's deceiving because you might think no pain but your body still shuts down. Your, my, my body has experienced an attack, an attack of my environment right now. I've got hormones to contend with, I've got environmental factors, I've got living with the coronavirus, it's everywhere you go. But my body, I'm trusting my instincts and so Yesterday, if you'd seen me, I couldn't form words, literally. And there is certain stimulus I can take. Certain stimulus I can't. Um, I can't take loud noises. I can't, I, as you can see, I'm in my bedroom right now and the window's over there. I can take light. I'm okay, but if it gets too bad, I do have sunglasses. But this is a bit no one sees. This is invisible, but it's not imaginary. You're only seeing the bit that... I, I think about showing because if you saw the real thing, 
if you saw the way my legs shut down, the way I can't speak, the way I cry, because I think, how long is this going to last? And when you're in pain, you do think, if this lasts, how am I going to survive? I was saying that to Jack. I did an interview recently where I talked about this very thing. And I'll be honest, I don't even know how I survived that, and that was like nearly nine years ago. So for me, it's just, it's constantly about symptoms and signs and following your instincts. But with the spring comes, even though it's pretty and it's nice to get out and about and it's nice to, if you can, if you've got somewhere to go, but it isn't pleasant. And I wanted to show what a migraine looks like. So I have, I have um, nausea, but I'm not going to puke. I can tell the difference. If I puke up, I know that I'm, I'm kind of, it's, it's shit, basically. Um, yesterday, <clears throat> excuse me, yesterday, um, I could feel that my stomach was shutting down. I have gastritis, and I take um, an anti, what's it called? Um, what's it called? It's this pill, um, Rennie, I can't remember what they do. But they basically protect your stomach from stomach acid. I take it and normally my body kind of agrees with it. But yesterday, because of my stomach shutting down, I couldn't talk. So my, my speech went. I'm, I'm aware of what's going on around me. My body just shuts different parts of me down. And the more rest I get, the better. But um, I noticed that yesterday I felt quite sick. So everything I'd eaten had kind of gotten stuck in my pipe. And it was like, okay, do we wait until your stomach decides to digest it, or do we bring it up, and that's where your sickness comes from. So, um, yeah, I figured that if there are migraine sufferers out there, maybe you know me from Instagram, maybe you know me from Twitter, but I thought I would share this. Everyone knows me as being bubbly and easygoing and happy. But this is what what's happening behind closed doors. This is what happens when a migraine comes along. And it's neurological, there's no cure. I've taken ibuprofen, so I'm waiting for them to kick in. Hopefully they'll kick in soon. <laughs> um, but now I have to rest, and hopefully the more I rest, and it doesn't mean kind of retiring to bed, but it is entirely, like, depends on the person. To me, it means sitting down, could be watching TV, it could be just relaxing my body, drinking, eating, having, like, listening to people, that's what I do the rest. And I don't practice self-care, to me that's like a popular word for the internet. For me, I just listen to my instincts, everyone's born with them. And now more than any, any time we're listening to them, so it's no odds to me, I, I'm just going to continue listening. So, um... Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to do a video when I feel better about my hair and what helps during a migraine. And, um, yeah, I figured that I'd share this because it's a massive part of my life. I am a migraine sufferer. It's, it's not a weakness, it's just something. I have hypersensitive senses. I just, that's just what I'm like. I hope you could um, understand most of this. If not, tough shit basically <laughs> but I thought I would document this so that if any other migraine sufferers are out there everyone's different but this is what's happening to people that you may know you just don't know what happens to their bodies so um yeah I'm gonna leave it here I'm gonna go down and rest now and um just vibe thank you for listening I hope that this made sense, so when people say about a migraine, it isn't just a headache, it's the farthest thing from a headache. It's, it, when you think about symptoms, it could be hay fever, yeah, that's, that's part of symptom, but there are other things going on too. And um, if you know someone with a migraine, maybe you know me, this is just a little bit of what goes on in the life of Jem. Um, so uh, if you want to um, follow me, maybe you're a migraine sufferer, if you want to follow me, great, you can do, bye. I'm not going to point, <laughs> but <laughs> you will see the banner by my, <laughs> by my left shoulder. So um, I will catch you later and thank you for listening. Thanks, bye.